Uh, Bordel here. Just want to thank each and every one of you that subscribed to the channel. We just broke 9,000 subscribers. My goodness. And we're on the way to 10,000 subscribers. So join Bordel Nation today and suffer Bordel. It's that easy and it's free. Now on with the deck profile. Uh, Bortle here. We have here another 3v3 champion. Brian Chen, welcome back on the channel. Former YCS champion. My goodness, how are you, man? Been good. And to top it off, you're using Sky Strikers again. That is just insane. So why'd you choose this deck post ban list? Um, so post engage ban, I just like Sky Striker because honestly, just the consistency of the deck changed, but the deck itself played the same way as it did before. Um, but engage was a pretty big hit. But if you make like adjustments towards like you know the meta, then you can still play the deck you like. So that's why I play Sky Striker still. So this three v three event, man. Uh, what other decks were like on your team? Um, so my player A was playing Dragon Link, and my player C was playing uh, Zodiac Elvich. Oh, nice! And you were the captain playing Sky Striker. That's pretty cool. Uh, more or less, yeah. Would you like to do some shoutouts before we start the deck profile portion? Uh, yeah, so I want to shout out my team, obviously, uh, Alex and Vi. Um, they're really good teammates. Uh, I actually did the worst going for two, but um, I was helping out my team like um, before the tournament, like with the deck, with the decks and stuff, and like the choices, the reasoning and stuff, and like doing the match, like I guess certain like interactions that maybe they might have not known that they asked me about. So I feel like we really worked well as a team, and that was why we um, pre uh, prevailed at the end. We got a couple other shout outs. I want to shout out my team, uh, Team Royalty. Uh, we, I'm honestly, I think. Me and uh, one of the person, Corey, uh, we're like the only ones that still play right now because everyone's like, you know, kind of off the Yu-Gi-Oh season because of COVID and stuff. But I think when COVID ends, then um, hopefully we like come back together as a team and like top a lot of events that we did in the past. Shout out is like, um, I guess my like RL friends that aren't really Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Tina, Jacob, uh, Annie, and Vin. Um, like they always like keep me busy when I'm like, you know, not playing Yu-Gi-Oh. And I always appreciate them. Alrighty. So without further ado, please take it away with the deck profile, Brian. All right, so I played uh, three Ash Blossoms. Uh, this one's like really self-explanatory, but I think this deck's biggest fear right now is Shadal Fusion and Red Eyes Fusion, like just opening them raw uh, without through Anaconda. So that's why I think Ash is like super important, even though it is one of the low impact traps compared to like Ash and Nibiru, which I don't think go very good in this deck because like for Nibiru, it's like kind of hard to get the monster off the board. And for Gamma, you're playing with extra dead cards in your deck, which I personally just didn't like, so I didn't opt to play it. And then uh, for the last four monsters, obviously three Ray. And then uh, the more controversial part of the deck is the one Rose. Uh, most people say that you do need starters to play, which I do agree with. But Rose, to me, isn't much of a starter because it doesn't really protect you from anything. And your Sky Striker cards during the end phase, they don't really interact with your opponent unless you open the multi roll, which you can't search because Engage is banned. Um, also, every time I open Rose, I feel like you're just playing with one less card. So I'd rather have like a high impact trap, like Ice Dragon's Prison and Solemn Strike. Um, so that's why I only play the one Rose as, like, if I could just area zero it on the board and then, like, Afterburner as an extra deck monster, bring it out on the field, then that's, like, what I think Rose's purpose is, not really much as a starter. So that's why I just play the one. So that's seven monsters. And then for the spells, I played one Call by the Grave. Uh, this card is insane, this format, because if you play against Dragon Link and you can just, like, Widow Anchor or Impermanence to Savage, they have to negate it because that's usually the one negate unless you just let them play out their entire hand. And they end with Hot Red and Savage. Um, so when they go seal effect and you call by the grave, it first they don't bounce and uh, they don't get the seal effect, which is why I think call by the grave is insane against that deck in particular. It also has like its own like um, uses for other matchups, but it was mainly for Dragon Link. And uh, next I played three Cosmic Cyclones. Uh, I think Elledge is really big this format, so that's why I play Cosmic instead of MST, even though it like benefits my deck a lot more. Uh, I played two Droplets, not three, because this is a go first deck, um, as you can tell because of the a lot of trap cards. Uh, I didn't want to main deck out to Dragoons, like, even though Strike and Ice Dragon's Prison combined isn't out to Dragoons, but I feel like Droplets is really good, especially, like, since Dragon Link and Bird Up is a deck, and most decks can't really, like, set up multiple negates for the, like, Droplets and stuff, as well as the monster negates that it provides. Like, Appaloosa, you make a lot, like, when you combo blind into, like, a big tournament. So, yeah, that's why I play Droplets and Mystic Mine. Uh, most people know that I'm not a huge fan of Mystic Mind because I think this card is terrible. Like, I still don't understand why, like, people think that, like, this card should be banned. Even though it does have a super oppressive effect, I feel like if your deck is, like, built to, like, just combo and not have outs to Mystic Mind, then that's just, your, like, your deck building fault. I personally feel that way. Uh, so the, my theory for Mystic, the one Mystic Mind in this deck is because I can search it off Terraforming as an option. And some decks, like Shadal's, if you can Prosperity, if you can just simplify the game state and then Prosperity for six for Mystic Mind, uh, it could just outright win you the game, game one, and you could just tie it out game two 
knowing that they like side in like twin twisters and like uh harpy's feather duster and all that stuff another interesting part of the deck is i played three prosperities instead of desires um i think desires is actually a much better card if like you can banish less of what you need and doesn't really like mess up with the deck ratios and stuff and it also doesn't hinder the deck as much as you think it does uh because engage is banned obviously uh the only one card you can't use with this card is upstar goblin uh, which is like a really small like downside and it also gives you specific like cards like pot of duality obviously without the drawbacks and searching ray basically searching ray with this deck is like super important because the games you do play as long as you like play it properly i feel like is how you always win the game playing sky strikers what i usually banish off the prosperity uh it's usually three for the most part um i usually banish Hulk, unicorn and hyate if i just like need ray or like don't have a lot of trap cards to protect myself but if I open like double strike Ice Dragon's Prison, I usually banish um, Hayate, Kaina, and then like most likely Hauk or Unicorn, depending on how I feel if I know the matchup already. So that's what I usually banish. And then given the circumstance, mid game, you can banish whatever you feel you don't need. And next, I played Rhoda, um, self explanatory, two Area Zeros, one Afterburners, one Hornet Bit, two Shark Cannon. Uh, you don't need to play three anymore because Drytron isn't a, like an amazing deck right now. And you don't play Desire, so you won't banish like multiple copies of this card. So I think two is just fine. Three Widow Anchors. Uh, this card is just really good. Uh, Multi Roll and Hercules Base. So I played Hercules Base because I think Shadal is like very, very popular right now. And the way this deck beats Shadal's is you do a little push, you add back a card off uh, red, and then you area zero the red away so you can't get Shadal Fusion for like a plus three. And um, since that deck is. Um, really strong against this deck in particular because if they aerial you and you lose three spell cards or two spell cards in ray that puts you too far behind for you to like have a big push because the spell cards in your grave are what really help you like take all their monsters and then like deal big damage before like you know they can do the same back to you so that's why i think hercules, hercules space is really important and that's why i play the one obviously uh terraforming upside being the last two spells self-explanatory um, so I decided to play Trap Cards because I think this deck is already good going second. So I don't think a going second deck needs to make its going second even better. Especially when it's like an in-person event where if someone saw you play Sky Striker and they see you go blind second, uh, if they make you go first and you open just a bunch of like Mystic Mines, Lightning Storms, like uh, evenly matches and stuff, then you're basically just like passing on like Shizuku or at best like Widow Anchor plus Shark Cannon which I think is like really weak against decks that can play through a lot of interruptions. So that's why I decided to play the trap cards, and I decided to play the six best high-impact trap cards, in my opinion, which were Ice Dragon's Prison and Solemn Strike. And these are just like hands down the best because Drytron doesn't exist, and Strike just negates everything. The last three traps I played was Imperm. Personally, this this trap, like uh, for me, was like, okay. Like the theory was just like, um, so it would play around talents, and against some trap decks if they put cards into a column you can just set it and then like hopefully negate it for the turn you know just like the old use of impermanence but the theory was it was like a good card against rocket and uh Shadals, so, so that's why i played impermanence very good explanation overall for the main deck obviously you can't yep. really fit pot of avarice because you're playing disparity in this build but what are your thoughts on like pot of avarice and possibly like going towards like uh you know desires type builds actually haven't been a fan of avarice since engage got banned which is when avarice came back i believe i'm not too sure sure you can like link up all your stuff to make avarice live but if you link up into all your stuff and they do ash it or just like hoquero or dd crow you then the avarice doesn't resolve and you just lost four links and you played into nibiru also so it's just like there's no reason to like play that card and it's only good in the late game where it's like you absolutely have no other choice but to like you know shuffle back everything to draw to hopefully they don't have ash because the late game i feel like they would but yeah i'm not really a huge fan of it because like if basically is a dead card the first two um two-ish turns which i feel like this deck needs like everything in its like disposal to like put you ahead so yeah that's that and then uh like i said for desires earlier i want to play does i want to play a card that i can activate without like you know waiting for me to like dig out something because Prosperity can start your turn with it, and it won't hinder your deck if you, like, banish the right stuff based on, like, you know, player knowledge and all that. Like, how you think you can work your hand to, like, um, set up a really impressive board so your opponent can't OTK you with it? Because if you banish Afterburners against, like, an Invoked Shadal deck, then, like, you almost can never win because Makaba is really hard to out. And if you Widow Anchor it and they banish it off the Makaba, uh, with the, sorry, with the Makaba effect, then, like, your turn is basically over and you just, like, fall too far behind. So I think you need all the resources you can for this deck, like right now. Uh, granted, Desires does say draw two, and this only says uh, add one. Uh, that's like the 
flip side of playing Prosperity over Desires and why I chose to play Prosperity instead of Desires for this event. Okay, perfect. Would you like to run down the extra deck? So for the extra deck, I played an access code because it's broken, you know. Uh, you, your deck just has all the different types at your disposal. Uh, I played Halki, Firebrex, and Unicorn. So before, um, I guess I changed this the day before, I played a Nightmare Phoenix and a second Zeke because I think the Link 2s come up way more often than Hulk and Unicorn. But I felt like I, w I actually never made Phoenix ever since I put it in like a month ago. The second Zeke, I always do banish off Prosperity. Uh, it never actually comes up, but like I sometimes do miss it because I didn't play base in the past. Like just a tuner in general. You can Hulk into Unicorn and then like spin a card, which is I think pretty decent for just uh so that's why i decided to play it's just good removal in general and then uh my other link three i played a Ningrisu. uh this is just like a main deck out to dragoon honestly and like um uh, like i said against a shadal matchup if you can just clear your extra monster cards while outing cards at the same time then i think it's like super beneficial for you and like puts you ahead most of the time so that's why i played that but it was mostly for dragoon honestly and then the last links are like the extra deck ones uh three Haate, i think you have to play it uh three kagari one uh Kaina, three Shizukus, and then one Zeke. Uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory. I think you need all of them. Uh, granted, I did say you always banish Hayate of Prosperity, but it's like a small price to pay to like win the game, if that makes sense. Do you like to run down the side deck? Um, so for the side deck, I put two Lancia, two Ogre, and two Nibiru. I know the math doesn't make sense to play two of them, but I wanted to include all of these cards because I think they all have their own like separate purpose. I didn't want to play three, three, and just like cut one completely. Uh, so Lancia is mainly for Dragon Link and Invoke decks, and for Bird Up too. Like this literally stops like the Tri Brigade turn completely for the most part. And then Pankratops is really good, I think, right now because um, against Dragon Link it baits out a lot of stuff. I just think right now it's pretty good because before it was just like if they summon Calamities, Pankratops is like dead all the time. So I think it's like really bad. And also di I think Dinosaur is like pretty popular right now. So like this deck can actually Shark Cannon Over Raptor, summon Pankratops, and then if they like, don't read over Raptor. You can target their dinosaur and summon Pankratops back from your graveyard. So I think it's a cool interaction. It, only for the dinosaur matchup, obviously. But, like, yeah, that's what Pankratops is there for. And then uh, for the spells, I played... Uh, I cited um, Harpy's Feather Duster, broken against the spells and trap card decks. Uh, the second Mystic Mine, I probably will take this out. It's it's honestly the worst card ever. Like, times I did, like, hard drew it and activated it against, like, any deck, I lost. But the times I metaversed into it, as like an actual trap card that stopped their turn, it was like amazing and like it won me the game like outright. So probably we'll cut that for like a third copy of one of the six hand traps. Two twin twisters because like for the same reason as Duster, you know, it's pretty good. But the last four cards I play Metaverse, like I said, it's like a super good trap card with Mystic Mind. Um, it's basically like the barrier for like most decks. Even though they a lot of the decks do play outs to it, like tidying and stuff, they can't really tidying on their turn before they said it or until they said it. So I think Metaverse is really good. And then three Solemn Judgments, because a lot of the decks will make you go first, even though they they do see, like, a lot of trap cards. And, like, if you Metaverse into mine and you have Judgment set, you're basically drawing, like, two to two, two to three turns out, assuming they, like, don't draw back-to-back, -back, like, removal cards. So that's why I play Solemn Judgment. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap it up for this deck profile. Thank you again, Brian Chan, for being a part of the channel. And also, he has a Twitch, guys, so let's go ahead and follow that Twitch. Everything will be in the description down below, and we'll also comment down, too. So, uh, Brian, uh, what's your Twitch handle called, man? One underscore Yuchi Hongroy. Um, I'm not sure what the spaces are for, like, the Yuchi Hongroy part, but it should be in the description. By all means, we will definitely have that information down below. And listeners, if you're not part of Bordel Nation, it's up for Bordel. It's that easy and it's free. Oh, God, yes. Bordel out.